Russian bots are now at the point where they're offering money for people to listen to them and spread disinformation. They figured out a new way of doing this. Now they have bots pretending to work for ESPN and offering money if you retweet their stuff. Now, for foreign viewers, ESPN, by the way, is an American sports news conglomerate that is owned by Disney. And when I say bot, that doesn't necessarily mean automated. There can be accounts that are run by a human which give it a unique flavor. In fact, I'm counting on it to catch them. You know, uh, Twitter disinformation sucks, but before I get started, let me tell you about one ally in the misinformation fight, and that's Ground News. I am in Tampa, Florida right now, and I use the Ground News app every day to stay informed. So click the link in the description below or go to ground.news slash Ryan Macbeth to stay fully informed. Subscribe through my link and get 40% off the Vantage plan for this month only. I actually pay for Ground News. It is part of my daily routine. I wake up, I read my email, and I check Ground News. I actually pay for it. They did not give me this for free. Ground News is a news aggregator and it helps you understand biases in your news consumption. For example, did you know that New York City is moving forward with a plan to give debit cards to migrant families? Well, if you only get your news from the left, you might have missed that. Or did you know that some Republicans who support Nikki Haley are refusing to back Donald Trump? Well, if you only get your news from the right, you may have missed that too. Ground News exposes the blind spots in your news feed. Ground News also gives a factuality rating and ownership data for each publication so you know exactly who's behind the scenes telling you what they think you should know. So go to ground.news slash Ryan Macbeth to stay fully informed. Subscribe through my link and get 40% off a Vantage plan for unlimited access this month only. Now let's go catch some bots. Now all of this came to my attention from a Twitter user who pointed out another Twitter user named Jazzy Lynn Rose who for lack of a better term, smelled funny. So I started to pull on that thread, and as I pulled on that thread, I found four related accounts. Ishan ESPN, which was created August 2021, R. Richards ESPN, which was created November 2021, Andy Snatch NFL, which was created April 2022, and Mo 247, which was created February 2018. All of these accounts appear to be connected, and three of them were created before the war in Ukraine, with two created afterwards. Of all of the accounts, it seems like Ishan ESPN has the largest number of followers, so we're going to start with that account. I downloaded all of the tweets ever sent from Ishan ESPN, and I ran them through my extraction software, which, by the way, is free on GitHub. All of the spreadsheets I use to make the calculations are available for download for free at ryanmcbeth.substack.com. In fact, you can go there, toss me five bucks, I'd really appreciate it. Feel free to go there and check my work. Here's what I discovered. So the Eric Shin account was established in August with the first tweet August 8th, 2021. The initial tweets are mostly replies about New England sports. And one thing I'd like to point out is that the related account, Jazzy Lynn Rose, uh, emphasizes New England sports teams. There is some crosstalk between these accounts, so I think they are being managed by the same person, but I'm going to get to that one later. Back to Eshawn ESPN for him. This account performs mostly replies when he starts out. In fact, 65% of his tweets are replies. This is a standard Russian tactic to gain followers without spending too much effort. Look at my video on Cap Coronado to learn more about how Russian bots are born. The account tweets with an average of 16.83 tweets per day and a median of 13 tweets per day. The first overtly political post starts on February 28th, 2022, which is just four days after Russia invaded Ukraine with the following text. The world is healing. Soon Trump will be back and America will be whole again. God, I'm proud of this country, USA, USA, USA. On this day, this account posted twice as many tweets as normal, mostly between the hours of 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. with a midday break between 4 and 5, which I assume was their lunch hour. Even Russian disinformation agents have to eat. The first mention of Ukraine was also on that day with this tweet, and DeAndre is off to Ukraine, reported first by my coworker and dear friend. After this day, 
the political posts start in earnest. So let me pull on this thread a little more. Eric Shun claims that he is a radio personality and former wide receivers coach for the Indianapolis Colts, which is an American football team. So this person is representing himself as a person who had a show on ESPN radio and was a former employee of the Indianapolis Colts football team organization. Now on August 22nd, 2022, the account says that his show, Let's Talk About It, will be transitioning to a podcast. He also says that his co-host, Vinny Moretti, which I mentioned earlier, is a suspicious account, would be following him there, and you can listen wherever you get podcasts. Well, Spotify has no listing of this podcast. Okay, well, the, the guy did tweet that uh, his radio show was turning into a podcast, so maybe if we go back in time to July of 2022, we should see it on the ESPN website. So using the Wayback Machine, as of July 1st, 2022, there is no mention of Let's Talk About It on the ESPN radio website. And you know what's funny is that Jazzy Lynn Rose also claimed that she hosted that podcast. In the intelligence community, this is what we call a clue. So I looked at LinkedIn and I searched for Eric Shun as a current or past member of ESPN. No results were found. I searched for Jasmine Lynn Rose as a current or past member of ESPN. No results were found. I reached out to Obscure IQ, which is a service that removes your private data online. In order for them to remove your private data, they have to know where to go to get all the private data. So they're a really good investigative resource. They could not find any record of Eric Shun or Jasmine Lynn Rose working for ESPN, the Disney Company, or the Indianapolis Colts. So I went to Quantifind, a risk intelligence dual-use startup. They sent me two reports. There is no evidence that two people with these two names work for ESPN, the Disney Company, or the Indianapolis Colts. But you know what is funny? I did a reverse lookup of Eric Shun's profile picture, and it appears that he is a clip art headshot from the Pampa Flame Burger Workshop, only here he appears to be a professor named Thomas B. from the UK. And as I looked at Eric Shun's Twitter account over time, his profile picture has changed at least three times. Now, I remember when I said at the beginning that Russia was paying to get people to spread propaganda accounts. Well, as you can see, it starts on December 14th, 2021, just two months before Russia invades Ukraine, where the Eric Shun account says, I'm giving $100 to everyone who follows uh, Pan Getty, Pan Nadi Jr. by midnight. Reply to this with your Venmo when done. Now, the only person that responds to this is Vinny Moretti, who is that fake co-host account, and he lists a Venmo account which does not exist. So this may have been a test run to see if anyone would bite, uh, but it is pretty clever. This is a great way for Russian disinformation agents to build up their followers. So let's get back to Jazzy Lynn Rose for a second. I looked up this particular user's picture. It turns out she is really clip art from Amazon and Walmart websites used as a model for insulated cups. That this model's profile picture, it's a stock model. It's a stock photo model. And just for kicks, I logged into Cyabra, a social media threat detection service, and that Jazzy Lynn Rose account has published spam before. Uh, note that another Twitter user discovered the Jazzy account model profile back on February 9th. In this particular case, uh, Jazzy claimed to work for ESPN and DraftKings, which is an American sports book. After being called out on this, her account was changed so that she no longer references those organizations. Note that the account was called out on February 9th of 2024. Do you remember what happened on February 8th of 2024? It was the Tucker Carlson, Vladimir Putin interview. Boy, Tucker Carlson is just the disinformation gift that keeps on giving. So let's take a look at Jazzy Lynn Rose. This account came out of the gate with guns blazing in October of 2023. And by November 25th, its first tweet was, America is waking up. Let's go boycott all of these woke companies, Trump 2024. About 90% of this user's tweets were replies, which again builds viewership. And the account posts a mix of mainly sports replies combined with stop finding Ukraine, I assume funding Ukraine. 
The account posts with an average of 79 tweets per day and a median of 67 tweets per day. At one point, over a two-day period from January 8th, 2024 to January 9th, 2024, the account tweeted 623 times between the hours of 10 a.m. and 11 p.m. You're not tweeting this much unless it's your job. At 2 p.m. on January 8th, the account tweeted 51 times in one hour. I think the final nail in the coffin was when the account posted, Tucker Carlson is a legend. Vladimir Putin is a good man. I'd rather have him lead this country than Joe Biden and the radical left. Stop funding Ukraine. Note that this was on February 8th after the Tucker Carlson interview. I'm not sure if this particular account was instructed to post that uh, because it's pretty obvious once you start saying that what kind of account you are. Um, maybe they were just doing inter improv and the mask kind of slipped. Um, what's crazy is that both the Jazzy account and the Eric Shin account talk to each other. And if we take a look at the high days on January 8th and 9th, you can see that they were both online and posting around the same time. And they both, of course, like to talk about New England sports. So I think the person who manages these two accounts might have spent some time in America, probably in Boston, and just more comfortable talking about teams from that city. Like any author, you write what you know. But these accounts also interact with other accounts. And one of the ways they do that is posting the spam. One of the accounts associated with these Jazzy and Eric accounts are the Dr. Richard Richard accounts. According to Obscure IQ, nobody named Richard Richards has ever worked for ESPN or the Disney Company. This particular picture was stolen from the LinkedIn account of a nonprofit entrepreneurial director in California named Scott Roglowski. Also note that the same picture uh, being used by this fake account is also being used by another fake account on LinkedIn called Patrick Hayes. I'm not sure if the fake LinkedIn account is related to the Russian bots on Twitter, but I, I might pull on that thread a little bit later. This Richard Richards account calls himself an alpha male, and they also claim to be an ESPN contributor, and they post Eric Shun's stuff. Another account that calls himself an alpha male is Coach Andy Feltersnatch. Man, you guys aren't even trying anymore. For my foreign viewers, snatch is an American slang word for female genitalia, so Andy felt her snatch. But this account also retweets the Eric Shun account stuff. And they claim to have an ESPN radio show called Snatch This, which does not exist. Finally, there is the Vinny Moriarty account, who is an alpha male, but somehow lives in Las Vegas, but I guess also works for a newspaper in Providence, Rhode Island. This person is also connected with the Eric Shun account where he encouraged people to like and follow Vinny for $500. So five accounts were caught, many more millions to go. I believe that these five accounts are either controlled by the same person or by a team of two individuals, one of whom may have spent time in Boston. In unraveling this intricate web of deceit, it becomes evident that Russia has been planning this attack on Ukraine for a long time and they implemented these Twitter resources in order to help execute it and manipulate American public opinion. But their tactics are also evolving with the times. And the discovery of accounts masquerading as representatives of reputable American entities such as ESPN kind of underscores the length that these bots will go to to manipulate public opinion. It's also kind of crazy because they can be found out as liars very, very easily. You know, um, if you do this, I will catch you. I will expose you. I will burn the accounts that you crafted for months to the ground. Find another line of work. Stay out of my country. Your lies are not welcomed here. I would like to thank a number of companies for letting me use their software for free in order to do this investigation. First is Obscure IQ, who finds and erases your personal information online. There's also Cyabra for social media threat detection and Quantifind, a risk intelligence company that uses open information to estimate your exposure to companies that may have potential financial risk, financial crime, and money laundering ties. If you want to support the channel, head on over to Bunker Branding and pick up one of my uh, Live Laugh Launch for Trident Missile shirts. 
Uh, look, if we're all going to die in a nuclear holocaust, why not do it with some style? Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey everyone, new Ryan Macbeth t-shirts and hoodies from Bunker Branding are available. I'm going to get the Highmars shirt. What are you going to get, Donald? The Patriot shirt, because I'm a Patriot. It's the best shirt, the biggest shirt. Make 14 tangos great again. What are you going to get, Barack? Let me be clear. I'm going to get a drone sweet drone shirt. What about you, George? I'm going to get a Trident missile shirt, because they're weapons of mass destruction. Oh, I'm going to get a landmine marker shirt because my presidency always blew up in my face. I'll tell you what I'm going to get. Ronald Reagan, but you're dead. I came back to tell you that no matter our politics, we're all Americans. And we should buy Ryan's hoodies and t-shirts because they pay for the stock footage and licenses that allow him to make awesome content. So come on down to Bunker Branding and buy a Ryan Beth t-shirt or I'll start the bombing in five minutes.